This is Geo Galvano, and you're checking out the Three Count Podcast. One. Welcome everybody to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. That's right. The man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. But like every good Sherpa, which you can call me, you got to have someone that's been there before or someone that's done it. So I go out and find somebody new every single time. And it's never about me, but it's about who's entering the ring. So today you can find this man on ACW, TPW, SCWA, HWF, HWT, C3W, and the trifecta itself. He is simply fantastic. Mr. Fantastic, Will Knox. Hey, what's up, Three Count? How y'all doing tonight? Bro, this has been a long time coming. Yes, yes, yes. I'm very happy to be able to sit down and do this. I wish I was in a better environment, but you know what? Anytime is the best time. Yeah, anytime is the best time. It's It, it really is, man, because what's been funny is that, like, we both kind of started roughly around the same time, but man, like you have just like hit the ground running and just like, you can find you everywhere. I think like what, North Carolina, West Virginia, <laughs> Virginia, Tennessee, New Jersey, New York, like you just, you, you are a true road warrior. Well, you know, like I did an interview a while ago and I, I, I got a late start, so I got to really hustle um i could just sit on my laurels and say be happy to say hey yeah i'm now in the ring and i i'm getting matches here and there but that's not what i want to do I, you know i want to test my test my hand I, I i already got past saying hey i was i had a professional wrestling match i want to show the world what i can do i want to learn as much as i can and i'm enjoying this ride you know I, road warrior i'm just taking any opportunity placed in front of me because each time I get in that ring, I get a little bit better. And I just want to see where this ride's going to go. Yeah, I like it too, man. Because I know like certain people will talk about like, well, what have you done? And be like, and I know you for a fact could be like, oh, well, I've been to places that you haven't even touched. So like, <laughs> I'm, I'm well aware. I'm well aware of watching the hustle, the hustle game get put down to work, man. But I'm going to ask right off the jump, who is Will Knox? Uh, Will Knox, um, well, that is who I am. But I was born and raised in Washington, D.C., uh, in the South Side in Anacostia. Uh, you know, it, I had a regular life growing up. Um, it was a struggle. Um, but, you know, eventually I, eventually I ended up coming out to Northern Virginia, getting into high school, got into wrestling, and really took a stride in that. And it was kind of also easy because it was during the Attitude Era. So there was a resurgence of some pro wrestling. And it was cool to be a wrestling fan again. But me, I've always been a wrestling fan. But, you know, you just weren't the odd one out wearing wrestling T-shirts all the time. And it, it was kind of funny. Uh, tonight, I was telling you before we started, um, the reason I'm in my car is because my high school is actually having their anniversary. And so I came in this homecoming this weekend. So I went out to the game and I actually saw an old buddy of mine and he looked at me like, dad, Will, you're still wearing those wrestling tees and stuff and didn't really take a, you know, look at what I had on, but uh, thanks to honorary <laughs> wear. But I was like, Taylor, I wrestle now. And he was like, oh shit. And he's like, man, I, that, I'm so happy for you. I'm glad, you know, I remember back in the day, you always was talking about doing it, but I'm glad that you're out doing it. And then, like, he looked online and was like, oh, shit, you are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a trip, man, because, like, you know, you, you said it best, man. Like, you're a late starter and, like, just like me, man. Like, we both, like, I think you got, like, a year on me, but, like, we're, we're it's not like we're spring chickens, man. We're in our late no. 30s <laughs> and we just jump into the business. We're like, bro, let's get into the sport. And like, yeah, I know I've had a couple of friends of mine tell me from back home. They're like, bro, like, we never thought you would just go do it. They're like, we knew you were a wrestling fan, but it's cool to see you do your thing now. And I'm like, nah, man, like, I, I appreciate it. I really do. <laughs> but I'm curious, man, speaking about getting into the sport. So how did you get into the sport? Like what? I mean, as you obviously said that you were a fan as a kid. So I'm just very curious, like, how did how did you find your way into it? Um, basically, uh, uh, hold on. That lights out. Gorilla Radio. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, no, basically what I did was um, I uh, it was during the pandemic and I was just sitting at my ass on home. And I remember I was a fan of uh, Sicken and I just saw him put a post out there saying, hey, if you guys really want to do this, you know, reach me out. I'm, we're going to start training. And I remembered that. And so I um, then I just went, I reached out to him and then he told me trainings on the weekends and I came out. Bet, man. I was, I was excited. I remember like seeing you. And at first I was like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> and then like, you know what though, man, like it was weird because like, I, I started looking at you like one as like a brother, but then also like just as a fun competitor and as a friend, because I was like, yo, like we legit have like pretty much the same story, you know, like both air force veterans, we're both getting in at our late thirties and we're both like pushing really hard. So yeah, to like watch the growth, man. I was like, damn, dude, this is awesome. Like, I like watching him do his thing. <laughs> so I'm curious, though, man, like, you've been, you, you've been around now, and I need to know, what's been the worst bump you've taken? Yeah. Um, uh, the worst bump I've taken, I would probably have to say uh, – Wow, uh, the most unique. I would say none of them's actually been bad. I haven't been hurt by any of them. So I would say the most unique bump I've taken so far was uh, Mr. Grimm's finisher. That was like the first time I took like a real high impact finishing maneuver. Mm -hmm. So the nervousness of taking it and plus, I mean, I'm, you know, bam, it's a DVD uh, jackknife. So, you know, I was, I was a little nervous, but he, you know, he took care of me and it was comfortable, but I would say it was the most unique because that was some, like, you know, so I, I've never taken a burning hammer. I haven't taken a destroyer, but that was the first, you know, something like, okay, that, wow, that was cool. And so oh, I'm cool. hoping that there's not going to be like, a, you know, I'll be like, oh man, I fell off this one day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, you know, knock on wood, it, it, you know, it's wrestling and things happen, but you know, so far, you know, God, God willing, I haven't had that, you know, oh, yeah, this happened. And, you know, I thought I was going, you know. Right, right. No, no, no. I, I understand because I have that. I know a lot of people have asked me, they're like, are you planning on doing like ladder matches and stuff like that? I'm like, no, man. Like if I was like in my mid 20s or like even guess my late 20s, early 30s. Yeah, I might ride with it, but pain feels different when you get older <laughs> i'm not looking to do something crazy so that's like yeah, it's not like, it's not there uh it's not gone to the, the you know the middle of the next day you're feeling it for about two or three days yeah yeah and then you're just like then you just walk around like you feel like you have a cane even though you might not have <laughs> one like yeah no 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 like <laughs> so all right well aside from being like that being one of the more unique bumps they've had. So what's been the hard, who's hit you the hardest? Uh, who's hit me the hardest? I would, you know, I would, I would say uh, Bam, because Bam and I like to go, Bam and I actually like to go out there and have a little bit of fun. We were talking about the postman who yep. shows up, delivers, and leaves. That's what he does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah we uh we've had him on the show too and yeah he talks about how he likes to he likes to work and it's yeah he's a unique individual too i love i have, i have never seen someone get a crowd so fired up like he does <laughs> yeah i mean to sit there and just see someone bring such like a like a, a energy out of them especially to face them it may it, it, it makes your match a lot easier and it makes it a lot more fun yeah I know, like, uh, I remember, like, the first time actually watching him work, uh, we were at ACW last year, February, right before the, the pandemic happened, right? And he came out, and he was doing this thing, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. And he walked up to this kid, and this guy, like, reached out to give him a high five. He's like, no, 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 no. You're white, which means you have the coronavirus, and I don't shake hands <laughs> with white people. And he just kept walking on, and I was like, and this guy next to me was he was drunk though, and he goes, "Man, fuck him." <laughs> he's like, "I could beat his ass in real life." <laughs> I was like, "Well, he's already got it on your skin, dude. He's already won this battle like nine times out of ten. <laughs> it's like, 
he's just yeah bam is a unique individual man <laughs> yeah i mean I, me and bam talking i was like it's so funny you know we'll we'll uh, he'll we'll talk to each other like like he's streaming to the crowd you know <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's all in love. I'm like I have great conversations with him, but he, he's he's a he's a very entertaining character. He is, and he's very knowledgeable too. Like you're right. Like you can ask him about stuff, and he always has like crazy ideas that he's coming up with. So he's definitely a a, a fountain of knowledge that you can you know learn from. <laughs> so, what's been like the hardest lesson that you've had to learn so far in the business? Patience. Patience and. You got to keep, I mean, it, what, what I've kind of learned is like, you know, as you start to get at certain uh, ma- match, you know, points and after having certain matches, you look back like, oh, and you see all the things that people keep saying to you and then everything starts to click in. And so um, patience, slowing it down, slowing it, slowing it, slowing it down. Um yeah, I'm, that's something I'm definitely gonna have to keep working because you know you you, you want to tell a story, and you want to be able to you know connect with people outside of your own head. Like you know sometimes we get in like I got you know you got your match and you this, but then you sometimes disconnect from the people that are there to see you. And so that's one thing I like. I got to connect, go slow, you know, and have patience. You know, if you have patience and faith, all things will eventually come to you. I like that. I like that a lot. So I know this probably wouldn't be like the fairest question to ask you, but I'm going to ask this anyway. If you have someone who's an up and coming wrestler ask you for advice, what advice are you giving them? I would tell them work hard, um, get in there and train, uh, and as well, go learn as much as you can. You know, wrestling, you're going to learn so much from so many people. Some people aren't going to want to help you. A lot of people are. Also, just listen and observe. You know, in the Air Force, we always told pay attention to our surroundings. Pay attention to your surroundings. There's advice almost everywhere you look in the wrestling locker room. You know, you might be able to be in a locker room with a lot of names or veterans, and you have that opportunity to sit and hear them call out their matches, the ideas that they have or the things they are talking about. Those are little nuggets that you pick up and can help you out. You know, as they say a lot, shut up and open your damn ears. You know, <laughs> take the cotton out your, out your ears and put them in your mouth and just listen. I, I've never heard someone say, take the cotton out your ears and put it in your mouth, man. <laughs> That's the first time hearing that. <laughs> All right, man. Well, seeing that you've been traveling around and, you know, you're, we're still relatively new to business and a lot of people don't know who you are. So give me one do and one don't of the locker room. One do you go in and you show respect. You go around and you shake hands. Um, you, uh, you know, you introduce yourself. If there's a veteran there, I mean, you show respect. Respect is, you know, the basics, you know, so hello sir you know you i mean you ain't you you don't have to be robotic but just show respect and the don'ts well you know the, if, if if you're not if you're if that's not you, you know if you're not on the show if you're not the, you know kind of be seen not heard you know don't be in the way don't um you know don't don't stick out when you don't need to stick out right I like that. I like you know, that you're there to make an impression, not a, uh, not a bad one. Yeah, I like that a lot. I know, like, a couple opportunities have come to me because, like, I've just, like, showed up, helped out, didn't say anything, just kind of kept my nose to the grindstone and just kept the pushing. So those are really, like, all my hard-hitting questions. So we got to get into the second best segment Uh-oh. of the Three Count Podcast. People ask me, what's the first? I tell them it's the Red Dogs Power Rankings that you can find every Sunday on our debate show. But that's not what this is. This is the Three Count Podcast 10 Count Questions. Mr. Knox, this is how it works. I'm going to fire off 10 questions at you rapid fast. Whatever is your first answer, that's your answer. You ready to play the game? Yep, let's go. All right, we're going to put on the imaginary timer for added pressure. Bing! And here we go. Smackdown or Raw? Raw. Favorite movie? 
Ghostbusters. The new one or the original? Original. Come on now. <laughs> hey, man. Are you the key master? Hell yeah. <laughs> Sonic or Mario? Mario. Favorite color? Blue. PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. Favorite type of sticky icky? Oh, damn. Uh, <laughs> we going to have to go with uh, that, that Jesus OG. Okay. <laughs> Marvel or DC? Marvel, Marvel, Marvel. What's Marvel. DC? <laughs> Favorite podcast? As of right now, the three po- the three count podcast. That's right, the three count podcast. All right, nominate one person that you want to see on this show. Flash Carter. I like it. And then last but not least, my favorite question asked every single person who comes on this show: favorite curse word. Motherfucker. <laughs> A good motherfucker, man, is what you need in life. <laughs> Hell yeah. Fuck that shit, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, well, those are the 10-count questions. So, Will, the last thing I need from you is to let our viewers and our listeners know where they can find you. You can find me on, on Facebook at Mr. Fantastic Will Knox, Instagram at Fantastic1WK, Twitter at ChefWK. Uh, my Instagram channel is Mr. Fanta- Mr. Fantastic Will Knox uh, or Darth WK. And if you want to see me soon, you can see me this upcoming October the 2nd in Homedale, New Jersey with SWF, The Band Still Stands, where I will be taking out the three geezers of wrestling, Ricky Rocks, Ace Lane, and Randy Hogan. <laughs> Bet. There you go. That's where you can find him. I'm probably sure. I'm pretty sure this episode will probably air after that. So you're gonna have to give us the results on that. On that, I'm coming out on top. Come on now, I'm a, I'm gonna lay out the geezers. <laughs> Bet. Well, there you have it. So now we gotta do what we always do. We gotta take it home. We gotta wrap this up. Go to the finish. And that means that this is it for the Three Count Podcast presents now entering the ring. And like I said, I'm your host Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up this mountain called wrestling but like every good sherpa which i am i had to find someone who's been there before and can help me get there back again in a faster route and that's what we did so it's never about me it's about who's entering the ring and you see him right there next to me he is the man the myth the legend mr fantastic will knox and you guys know what to do tune into the next episode and be there or you just wait till this episode ends the outro plays, and you pick another episode of ours. Peace. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want you to do right now, go to twitter.com, right? Go over there, find us at the Three Count underscore pod, give us a follow, give us a like, give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the Three Count Pod. Give us a like, give us a follow, leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to youtube.com, give us a subscribe, turn the bell on, turn on notifications, leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the three count podcast and in there you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys and we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also one thing I need you to do for me, the three count podcast also has merchandise. At ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash the three count pod. Please go buy our t shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So show us some support, please.